I literally nearly bought this hair from resin and then this came out and oh my god, I had to do this video. Hey guys, it's Monoy Eating Time and today we're finishing our Il Frecce Tricolori series by building the Aramaki Nan Leonardo M345. Yep, I know, I thought this series was over as well, but it's not. Il Frecce Tricolori are one of my favourite display teams of all time. I've only ever seen them flying with the MB339, but ever since I was a child I was obsessed with them. They were perhaps my favourite display team. I think sometimes they changed with uh, Patrouille de France, but it was more or less always the Tricolori. So, starting last year, I started doing the Italeri anniversary set for the Frecce Tricolori featuring an F86, a Fiat G91, and an MB339. At this point, it was already known that they were going to be upgrading to a new aircraft, the M345, which we'll go into the history of in a moment. But the only kits that were around were of the S211, which the M345 is based on. I know, you'll understand it soon. And it was a resin kit. At the time, I wasn't confident with resin kits, and so I decided against getting it. However, lo and behold, I was scrolling through Scalemates one day, and there it was, the M345, all ready to be released by KP Models. I was hyped. So, what did I do? Obviously, order several of them. I waited a while, and they uh, sat in back order, and then I thought, well, they should be released by now. However, I wanted to make sure I could get this done as soon as possible, so I head over to a European vendor and managed to find them and order them and they are still in customs and have been for a month. <laughs> so yeah, I ended up going to e-models and uh, getting one for myself instead. <laughs> So, as usual, we're going to go through the history of the aircraft itself. I guess we'll also talk a little bit about its history with Il Frecce Tricolori, which will be quite short. And we'll also talk about the history of the kit itself, which also will be quite short. And then we'll get into the building. <laughs> so, let's get into it. What is the M345? So, the Sia Marchetti S211 was designed to complement the propeller-driven aircraft, the SF260 as a advanced jet trainer or a lead-in trainer. Now the aircraft was designed in the early 1970s up until the 1980s and had its first flight on the 10th of April 1981. The aircraft was among various trainers at the time, some of which we've already covered, such as the Hawk Siddeley Hawk, the Dornia Dasso Alpha Jet and of course the MB339 from Aramaki. The aircraft did gain some traction, mainly from overseas orders and probably not from countries that are at the forefront of Western minds. So this would be countries like Haiti, the Philippines and Singapore. There were also some orders from Australia and the USA, though notably these were from private vendors. Overall, around 60 aircraft were produced to meet these demands. So it's not really a global player, but also it wasn't unsuccessful. The S211's potential would never be lost though, so when different companies took over Sia Marchetti, starting with Aramaki in 1997, the aircraft would be re-evaluated and sort of updated under the M311 moniker. It was hoped that with Aramaki's larger production capacity, they could reduce the cost down and it would mean that the aircraft would be more than competitive with turboprop competitors. The M311 had a revised cockpit, it had a new engine, but it didn't really seem to get the traction that they would have expected. They were actually expecting orders up until 2030, but this didn't really materialise, even though the aircraft was displayed publicly at places like the Royal International Air Tattoo in 2006. In 2012, which I guess now would mean it's under a linear aeromarkey, the aircraft would again be redeveloped and reproduced, this time with a Williams FJ44 4M turbofan engine, which was selected due to its use in sort of the business sector and also re-engineing in Saab 105s. With again the combination mentioned earlier of higher production capacity and this new engine, it was expected that this could cost around 5% more than a turboprop competitor whilst having much better flight characteristics. So it would be perfect for you know leading fighter training, advanced training, and well, I guess sort of more general training. There was also potential for attacker versions as well. Under the M345 moniker, it hasn't perhaps had the orders that we expected, but it's definitely started getting some traction. Enea, a Chilean company, have started looking at the manufacture and marketing possibilities in South America, 
whilst the Paramount Group have started looking at doing the same for African nations. Originally, the S211 was unable to compete with the MB339 and it wasn't ordered by the Italian Air Force. However, in this instance, the M345 has seen orders by the Italian Air Force and has actually also been selected as the mount of Il Frecce Tricolori. See, I told you it would come full circle. <laughs> the Italian Air Force ordered the type in 2017 with operations starting in 2020. So I've already sort of mentioned what's important for us today, which is the aircraft's history with Il Trecce Tricolori. Now, if I mentioned something correctly, the <clears throat> that happened is sort of the reason why Il Frecce Tricolori are yet to equip the type and it was originally expected they'd be using them sort of in, I think, 2022, but that's now expected in 2024. What's really interesting though is other display teams are also looking at using the type. The type is looking to replace the Hawk and the Snowbird in Canada under the Tutor 2 moniker, which would also mean it would be the mount of the Canadian display team, the Snowbirds. Also, we've done that one as well if you do want to go have a look. <laughs> Another operator of the MB339, which is um, the United Arab Emirates, are also looking at this type for their display team Alpha San, famous for their black and gold paint scheme. This has also been marketed as a replacement for the Alpha Jet, and France and Belgium both use the Alpha Jet, so it'll be interesting to see whether or not they ever select this type. My understanding at the moment, though, is a favour towards the PZ21 and the potential Airbus trainer, but We'll see how it goes. I guess now we need to look at the uh, S211 and M345 in gaming, don't we? <laughs> so I've seen a couple of variants of the S211 or M345, we're just gonna look at whichever one we see, in gaming. And the first one I wanna talk about is of course in Flight Simulator. So we'll first of all look at Michael Firefox and also footage from Johan Diaz. I think we chose the aircraft in Flight Simulator X or FSX and I found it online for free. It says you have to add it to your cart, but it's free. The model looks pretty damn good, and I've said it a few times, but FSX is not the newest flight simulator, but by no means is it obsolete. It's still got relatively good performance, and with the amount of freeware that's available for it, and even, to be fair, some of the cheap shareware that's available, the flight simulator is actually very much still alive and very much usable, particularly if you have lower end hardware. Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 is a much more demanding beast and unless you have a Xbox Series X or even a Series S or a relatively good gaming PC you're probably going to struggle to run it so Flight Simulator X is definitely a good option and I mean it's really cheap as well and on Steam so you know I do recommend it I've, I've played it a few times myself. Now something I also didn't expect to see was the aircraft in DCS. Now the video we're looking at is by Tegation and shows the S211 in flight. What can quite often happen with DCS is these are models that use the flight model of a different aircraft. So I know for example the Polish virtual display team using the TS11 use the uh, MB339's flight model but obviously the visual model of a TS11 which is a really clever way of doing it. The video here says that this is a personal project and it's not released yet so whether or not this is following that same moniker where it's not actually a full individual flight model or whether it's entirely its own beast it's yet to be seen, but it's really cool to see that the aircraft's there. I've also seen this aircraft in X-Plane. We don't really talk about X-Plane too much, mainly because I do focus more on flight simulator because that's what I'm personally more comfortable with. But hey, this aircraft is in X-Plane and that's really lovely to see. The footage you're seeing here is by Flights Worldwide and you can see the S211 is all its glory. X-Plane 11 is something that I do own, however, I didn't enjoy it that much. I, there were just certain things that put me off but it looked stunning and maybe I need to go give it another go to fly the S211. <laughs> Let's go and have a look at the history of the model. So this is a model by KB Models and I'm gonna try and say it. Kovazodi Prosteo. I have no idea if I'm even close but sure that's KB Models. <laughs> Now KB Models released this model in 2022 uh, in September. So there have been four boxings of this kit. There's the Leonardo M345, which is Italian markings pretty much, and that's the one we're looking at, and the one I actually managed to get a hold of. There's also the Sia S211 in 
again sort of Italian markings and the SEA S211 and other services which features the American uh, private user on the box art, I'm assuming to appeal to American audiences and it also reaches the Air Forces of Haiti and Singapore but for some reason unfortunately not Philippines which would have been a shame because it would have had nearly every operator them bar the Australian private operator. Then there is also the SEA really Aramaki S311 or M311, which again is in Italian markings. The boxing seems to come with parts for most models, it seems, because I've got the M345 and it did have multiple parts I didn't need to use, so it does appear that kind of standard for KP models if you ever built them before. They do seem to box it in several variants, but it's cheaper to produce it just all the parts and then you just leave the parts you don't need to use, which I guess makes sense. Well, I guess we've reached the end of looking at the Sia Marcati S211 or M345 and it's time to move on to the kit. <laughs> I'm really excited because this is a project I was dying to do. Now, bear in mind, I view myself very much as an average model maker and that I am also a brush painter. So some of my techniques are going to be different to perhaps other people use them. And also I try and have as much fun as I possibly can doing these whilst learning as much as I can. I'm not perfect. <laughs> Let's have a look inside the box first of all, have a look at all the parts before we get into construction then. Okay, let's have a look inside the box. There's Leonardo M345 with three different schemes. We're not using them, obviously, but we've got the prototype. We've got the first one that went into Italian service. And we've also got the display scheme, the solo display. Wow, that's cool. So let's get this all unpacked so we can have a look inside the box properly. So you can see the screws here. It's not, not too bad. It's not very intimidating. Obviously, there's a lot of work to go into this because there's no pins or anything to align it. So you, it's a lot more of a an advanced modeler kit I guess but the parts look fantastic I mean look at this clear part it's pretty immaculate the detail on it is really nice and you can see my nails through it there's no sort of distortion really obviously for the shape because it's a curved piece of clear plastic but otherwise it looks really nice honestly it's got to be like a solid 8 out of 10 for that now we're onto the sprue itself and you can see the engraved panel lining all along the fuselage of the M345 and you'll notice the nose is there. Now the nose is one of the parts that you get for both types, apparently they had a slightly different shape. So you get both of those included and also you get some wing tip um, as well that you can sort of swap depending on which type you're using. So there is quite a lot included in this kit. As I say, I think it just lets you build any variant and the instructions will determine which one you need to do. But the detailing looks really nice. I, I can't really fault much about it. I mean, you can see the cockpit sections there, the uh, air intakes as well, the engine sections and sort of the, uh, of the under wings and the undercarriage. It's just a really nice looking kit. I don't know obviously how accurate it is, that isn't my strong point of studying every millimetre of an aircraft to see if it's 100% accurate, but to the naked eye it looks like a good representation of, to me, what's like a sort of smaller uh, Doria Dasso Alpha Jet sort of thing. So yeah, and you can see the seats are all in separate assembly here as well, so the cockpit hasn't been forgotten at a 170 second scale, which is something that is really nice to see. Now the decals. I'm not sure, so I think the green in the uh, Italian roundel is too much, Just it, from the pictures I've seen it should be sort of slightly less green, but it is what it is, otherwise the decals look really nice. And the, uh, the instructions here look really good, it's sort of standard for KP kits, they will show different things in different colours to try and help highlight what's important, what you need to cut, what you need to glue, and it works. Again, I wanted to compare this to other aircraft that the Frecce Tricolori have used and this is against the fuselage of an MB339, this is the Italeri kit. So you can see sort of how much smaller this aircraft is, so it really has got figuratively and literally big shoes to fill. And as someone who's been watching Il Frecce Tricolori with the MB339 since I was a child, I'm really curious to see how this new M345 matches up in. I'm really happy I got the opportunity to build a model kit of it with this, what seems to be, a really lovely little kit. 
Well, looking inside the box, the kit looks pretty good. As is normal for KP models, this is not going to feature alignment pins and you're going to have to depend on a bit of moxie to get yourself through this. What is this, the 1930s? Moxie? <laughs> I also will point out before we even go into this that I had one area where I really kind of messed up and ended up getting a lot of um, non-poly cement, so PVA glue overlapping with poly cement that just created an unholy mess. I think I eventually fixed it and covered it up mostly, but yeah, it was a bit painful. <laughs> so let's get into the construction and painting of our Il Frecce Tricolori M345 high efficiency trainer. On to construction it is then. So we are cleaning up the tail section. I noticed that I dry fitted the teeth use large halves and it's one of those where the tail isn't completely on one half. So one part of it sort of slides inside the other. And unfortunately, it's sort of slightly overfilled. So I did have to cut a little bit away. I also glued the wings together. And I didn't realize I was gonna have to chop off the wing tip. So you will see later on that I do chop them off and I have to stick a new wing tip on. But that was my error. I just didn't realize that was even a thing. I didn't dry fit these properly before, which is my own fault. So I did have to go and remove some excess sprue. But I mean, that's just, pretty standard on uh, any model kit, especially when you're doing one that doesn't have alignment pins where it's even more important to make sure that you can get a really flush finish because otherwise you're going to have massive gaps. So you can see me sticking the wing tip on there um, after I've cut it off and uh, I had to use a lot of filler to make it sort of flush. I don't know if I just missed another part that should have gone on, but either way that's how I ended up doing mine, which probably was less than ideal, but hey ho. Apparently some of this I'm doing off the screen, I do apologise, but um, this is sticking the uh, cockpit seats together because of my nails. Again, I do have to use tweezers because my nails get in the way otherwise, but I did eventually manage to get them on. I made this so much harder for myself um, by accident. Once I'd done one, I was like, oh, there's actually a really easy way to do this. And then I just did it really easily. <laughs> but hey ho, sometimes that's just the way it is, isn't it? So the cockpit assembly was really simple. It's done in two entirely separate parts. So quite often you'll have like a stepped bathtub sort of arrangement. This one is just two separate uh, pieces and I didn't really have any issue making sure that they fit properly. In fact, they went in perfectly, so I'm assuming that's why this was done, but it's really nice to see that the cockpit hasn't been forgotten. It has a nice amount of detail, but not so much detail that you feel overwhelmed, which I know for a lot of people can happen, especially at this scale. You can see for some reason I really struggled to put the seat in though, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> so I am putting some paint in here now. I haven't primed the inside of this. I sort of forgot to do it. When I, as soon as I started putting the paint down, I was like, ah, I haven't primed this. That's why it's not sticking. So that's why you can see it sort of pooling and moving around. But because it's the inside of the cockpit, I'm not too worried. I'm quite happy to layer it quite thick because to be perfectly honest, you'll barely see it anyway. So I'm never really too worried about painting the inside. It's only on a few kits where I really try and make sure. Now I was using photos online to try and get the right colors and also using the instructions to try and make sure I got the right colors as well. It appears that the cockpit is mainly like gray with some black obviously uh, absorption surfaces and the seats I used pictures from online to try and make sure I was getting the right colors for. The wings I'm just sort of gluing the edges to them uh, to make sure that they sort of fully sealed. Now this is the undercarriage assembly. This seems quite fiddly. To be honest with you again, a lot of fiddly um, issues are probably because my nails, most of you people can probably just use uh, your sort of normal hands and fingers and nails. But for me, they just got in the way of this tiny little piece. However, I want to really stress that this undercarriage assembly works. I haven't had any issues with it collapsing. Whereas on an Alpha Jet, I always find that my undercarriage collapses. So whatever KP have done here, whatever black magic they've done, I am absolutely in awe. <laughs> I've got something that looks like an Alpha Jet to an extent, but has working undercarriage. It's madness to me. You can see it's, it's not too fiddly. You sort of have to stick 
the side pieces together, stick a back panel on, and then the undercarriage bits actually have holes that they slide into. There's sort of two pieces, they sort of cross over, and then you stick the wheels on it, and then they go upside down into the actual fuselage where there's a little bay for them to sit in. For some reason, I also really struggled with that. I don't know why, I just kept confusing myself. But you can see I'm just making sure that it all sits really nice and somewhat neatly. It probably isn't exactly how it should be, but say KP instructions are what they are. They're not bad at all, but you definitely need to have some experience because sometimes it's not super duper clear. You can see me popping it into the little bay there um, to sit in. I think this is when I actually did it correctly because I did it wrong about four times because for some reason I was crossing it around in my head. And I've also stuck on one of the wings now. I'm going back now, I'm painting the cockpit. So the cockpit is just sort of an olive green on the seats. I think the actual seat itself is uh, black or light dark grey, it's a dark grey, there we go, um, and that's pretty much it for the actual inside of the cockpit, I didn't really do much more, there, you'll see later why it, it actually was kind of good, I didn't really worry too much about the detail because I had to do something to make the model work that unfortunately sort of ruins the cockpit a little bit. Now this is actually the engine, I I, I mean really two minds about engines because particularly with ones like this, unless you really, really look, you're never going to see this. So to be perfectly honest with you, if you really wanted to just skip putting this part in, I wouldn't blame you. You'd never see it because it sits sort of, I'd sort of say around the halfway, two thirds point of the canopy, as you can see there. So it doesn't sit all the way flush to the end. And so the, the sort of the fan blades that you see are so far down that the reality is you're probably never going to see like the detail on them anyway. So yeah, just that's just a, something to really consider. I then went ahead and stuck the two fuselage parts together, having put both of the wings on now. You can see the front section is sort of a squoval sort of shape, a square oval. And I've sort of loosened one of the cockpit sections by accident when putting it together. The wings do have gaps and I don't know if it's because I over sanded or whether it's just sort of again the nature of the kit but to be honest this is only my second I think KP kit, um, I think third AZ or AZ KP kit anyway in general. Now I am dry fitting the cockpit uh, canopy and what I ended up having to do was just chopping off some of the top of the seat. Again it's probably my error which is absolutely fine so what I did was I chopped off enough of the seat so that it's that flush that's why you can see it's a slightly different color at the moment where i've just cut it off with my uh, sprue cutters now this is the nose section that's uh, i'm putting together now you just put in the front uh, landing gear assembly bay there and i've just popped that in and i've filled it with glue and i'm putting in weights because you need a remarkable amount of weights i think i want to say it's like 10 grams or something it's it's a lot more than you normally it's normally like five or so and yeah I, I really didn't do this very well this is my fault so i once didn't put enough weight in and secondly i didn't let it dry fully so then the glue that i was sticking the weights in with which was like a clear glue and um, was reacting with the uh, poly cement in the end i did get it to fit and also i found that it needed a little bit of filler anyway so i used that too um, i did end up breaking those off a few times unfortunately the air engine intakes are really easy to do. I didn't have any difficulty with these. There is sometimes just a, does it look right sort of approach to do with these. And yeah, that's pretty much how I did them. And you can also see where I've put the filler in on the edges of the wings as well, where I've had to put the wing tips on. Now what I'm doing at the moment is putting in the little, I um, can't remember what they're called, but they're like little curves that go under the wings. Most aircraft do have them, including the Hawk. The Hawk, I think, also has six, maybe. Now, I think I differed from the instructions here because I was trying to make sure it looked like the uh, Il Frecce Tricolori scheme, um, or the version of the aircraft, because they, they don't get a standard version of the aircraft. That they get the Pan version, which is one just specifically for the Il Frecce Tricolori. And it's the same with the MB339 as well, and it was the same with the G91. So we've pretty much got the model together now. I've done some sanding on it. I've tried to make everything look as nice as I can. I do think it looks okay. So I undercoated it with Tamiya uh, Grey Primer. And what I'm doing first of all is I've taped off where I don't want the blue paint. Uh, I'm using Lufthansa Blue 
from Raval, which again, as we've sort of talked about through the entire uh, Frecce Tricolori series, seems to be the right perfect blue for the, uh, for the for their aircraft. So I'm just going along, putting it on. I'm trying to make sure I'm doing really thin coats so I can keep as much detail as possible. It looks thicker than it probably is. You can see as it's drying, it's looking a lot thinner. That's quite standard with these paints. And uh, I I did quite a few coats just to make sure I was getting really solid coverage at the end. But importantly, what I was trying to do was seal the tape onto the model so that I wasn't going to get blue leakage underneath because we're going to have to do some colours that are not so friendly with blue or at least covering blue. So yeah, at, at the moment I'm using all the tape to make sure I do that. You will see in the end, I do sort of go off on my own and just try and do it freehand because it felt easier than putting tape on. Um, and I also really want to practice doing straight lines, but you can see the satisfying pulling off the tape there. A little bit of leakage, but I mean, it does happen, but it's not loads. And the lines are quite sharp and I know they're quite symmetrical as well, which is quite nice. But I forgot to do the uh, other side of the uh, fuselage there, so I went back and did that. I'm doing the first of the lines here, so it seems like the flag is broken up by silver lines. So I did that one, took it off, and I've gone over with the red, which is the first bit. And then we'll go silver again after I pulled it off, as you can see there. So it's starting to come together. I was really feeling confident at this point, probably too confident, because things did not go as smoothly. I decided I wasn't going to use the tape because it wasn't easy to use with the uh, the line, um, the aerodynamic shapes that were underneath. And so I just sort of went in for it. Now I was really focusing, so unfortunately you don't get a great picture of me doing the green. So this is the best I could do. Uh, I really apologize. <laughs> and then once the green was done, I did silver next to it. Now they do have Italia written down the center. So I tried to do this freehand. Again, this is something that practice uh, will be needed, but I don't think it looks too bad, again, considering the size of it. I, I've never really had to paint anything like this before, so it's it's not great, I'll say, It's but it's I don't think it's horrendous either. I think the A at the bottom, sadly, is slightly off kilter, but I, I was satisfied enough with it. Now, the shapes on top, I saw a lot of different reference photos, probably from lots of different times, and I, I don't know what went wrong. I, I know you guys are probably going to look at it and go, well, on all the photos, it's straight lines, but I, I saw one and I, I can't find it now. I swear I saw one where it was sort of like curved lines, like aerodynamic shapes. And for whatever reason, that's what I decided to go with. So I do apologize. You can see I did actually start with straight sections and somehow it ended up turning into slight curves. Um, that's what we end up with though. So. I found this bit really frustrating, I don't know why, I just, in my head, I just, every, every time I did it, the proportions just didn't feel right, nothing felt right, whenever I did this, it all just felt wrong all the time, um, I'm not sure why, so, you know, it is what it is, it's not the end of the world, um, but, yeah, it's just unfortunate, I guess. <laughs> So I went on to do the fuselage and the flag stripes that go down the side of the aircraft. So the stripes that go down the side are um, sort of triangular in nature. This mirrors what was on the MB339 as well. So I tried to just get the initial shape of the green um, using tape as a guide and then I went off and did it all freehand. I felt quite confident. I think this did actually turn out really okay, particularly because I had to outline it all with silver anyway, which I knew I was going to do freehand because I felt like tape was going to get me too thick a line just because of how my dexterity is using tape. So ultimately, I think I made the right call here. It doesn't look particularly neat now, but trust me, by the end, it looks pretty, pretty good, I think. The issue with green is it's not sort of really dense pigmentation, so you do sort of have to just casually keep going and going over it and getting it thicker and thicker until it's sort of a really opaque colour, because sadly just not. The way I did this as well was doing the red underneath and then filling it in up to the white rather than trying to do it all in one go. Again, for me, this was just the easier way to do it. I felt like if I taped both sections, I could get leakage 
and also I might not get a perfectly straight line because the wings on this don't fit in like a really straight flush manner so you you have to sort of just compete with the the curvature of the aircraft and I feel like tape makes that harder there's also sort of uh, some arrowy shapes done with the, uh, the flag colours on the top of the surface of the wing and uh, I did that all freehand as well. I was just using reference photos to try and get the right shape. Whether or not it's 100% right, who knows? <laughs> Probably isn't. Someone's going to do a better job at me in making this aircraft, but hey, I did what I could. I then freehanded the paint all the way down to the front of the aircraft and then filled it in with the blue afterwards to try and neaten it up. This isn't the neatest in the world, I'm fully aware of that, but by the end I don't think it looks too bad. The blue is really nice because it's so thick and dense and it doesn't take many layers to get it to cover up. Once I'd finished that and gone through with an outline, it was time for decaling. Decals I used were from the Frecce Tricolori anniversary box set, which gives you three MB339s. I was never gonna build all three of them. I only really have interest in doing one scheme. So I thought, hey, I'll just take them. I also then realized by pure chance that I'd done six, seven, and eight for my F86, G91, and MB339. So obviously this one had to be Pony 9. Once I'd got both sides on, I did go through and just do the uh, Frecce Tricolori three at coloured arrows uh, logo that they have. Now there were some from the boxes but this has it on both sides of the aircraft so in the end I decided to just freehand it and paint it and I don't think it came out too badly especially because I again don't really ever do any of these sort of small details myself. I do rely quite heavily normally on decals so ultimately I was really happy with the end result that I got. It's, it's not perfect, I'm aware of that you know I'm always someone who says if you don't if you don't use modeling to practice your skills you're never gonna get better you're never gonna grow so yeah it's always important to try and push yourself each time <laughs> the vigilant among you will notice there's no thin yellow line on the very bottom of the fuselage either and that's just because by the time I'd done all the painting I didn't think it would fit or look very good so I decided against that and there were some decals unfortunately I just didn't have time to do on camera and just did them off camera as well but yeah that's that's how the model ended up looking and well i think i think i did okay in the end <laughs> okay so i didn't capture doing all of the decals and there were some that i just forgot to do until sort of last minute so they're not going to be in the video so that means that this grand reveal we're going to have so that means when we look at the model it's going to be a bit more polished and hopefully you enjoy it because I worked really hard on this project. I'm really happy to have finished a series of the history of Il Frecce Tricolori because as such a massive fan of the art they do in the skies, I'm glad to represent them on my little shelf and see them every day. So it's time for the grand reveal. And uh, the pilot's uh, number one is leading the formation that is a uh, Major uh, Marco Lant, he is the guy who makes his dream real because uh, uh, he was born very close to the base of uh, the Frecce Tricolori and uh, uh, since uh, he was uh, uh, young, uh, he, was, he, he was used to see the Frecce Tricolori flying uh, in uh, Rivolta Air Base, that is our home base, and now he is the leader of the Frecce Tricolori. Now, ladies and gentlemen, follow the two sections for just a few seconds. Point your camera at the center. Be prepared for the first cross of the Frecce Tricolori. 1,200 kilometers per hour relative speed for this cross. Well, 
what did you guys think? Did you enjoy it? I really hope you did. I put a lot of work into making this a uh, really extra video, make it extra special, different. Yeah, I, I really tried. <laughs> so I just want to make a couple of comments. First of all, yes, there are a lot of points where I could have got neater lines probably by taking a bit more time and doing masking tape. Part of the reason I didn't do this is I want to practice doing straight lines without anything. Just being able to paint them without tape, without guidance. And I, I am getting that, I can see how much I'm improving. And that's really important. It's always important to remember that the model you just built is not gonna be as good as the next model you build. And the model after that is gonna be better than the one you're currently doing. You know, it, it's, a, it's a progress, it's a system you just have to understand is always going to be the case. You're constantly evolving as a model maker or painter or however you want to describe yourself. So I'm not unhappy with how it looks. There are bits that definitely need to tidy up, so the nose section where um, all the parts of the flag line that is a bit messy and I could probably have done that better if I bought a nicer brush. I need to get a nicer brush. <laughs> but I mean overall I'm really pleased with what I've done. I'm proud of this model. I think it looks pretty good. Particularly when I've got all four of them around each other. They just look so beautiful. I did take some liberties with the paint scheme. It's not 100%. I don't know whether or not there's any change but from looking at images online from when it was originally announced they were going to be using the M345, the one that flew earlier on, and sort of reference images I could see sort of relatively recently. I think the paint scheme has changed a little so I'm not too fussed. There are a couple of bits I did leave out, um, one of it being the yellow line that's right at the bottom of the aircraft. I'll be honest with you, I partly didn't realise that until right at the very end and then I thought if I try to put this on I think it will look really cramped. The line is so thin on the actual thing that I would struggle to get a bold bright colour for that. Although I could have gone over under it with white and then orange and yellow, I just personally didn't feel comfortable doing it so I made an artistic choice to leave it out. It is what it is, like yes it's an iconic part of the paint scheme but you know, you just have to make these calls cool sometimes. So. I don't think I did badly. I think I made a really interesting subject and I hope I showed that just because something isn't in the box doesn't mean you can't do it because this wasn't advertised anywhere and I just went, hey, I'm, I'm just gonna do it. <laughs> Haven't even touched the inbox schemes. I do however have three more of these coming and I was originally gonna build them all together. Um, probably right now they'll probably end up being sold but what can you do? <laughs> As for whether I'd buy or fly, from this model, I think you can already know what my answer is. This is an unusual subject, one that I thought Italy would have picked up before, however KP beat them to the punch and have definitely got ahead of the game on this and done a really clever subject. Especially doing the full box things, nice touch. I'm really happy with this, I think it was an easy cut to do, the only thing I have real criticism of is the weight. You needed a lot of weight in the nose and I just kept struggling and I had to put some in the cockpit in the end. Part of this is probably how I do my weight system and I probably could do with just getting some like lead or sheet metal so I can cut it up and just put it in. Can you notice it in the end? Not really unless you know it's there because I've painted it all black so it just sort of all blends together but it was kind of a bit touch and go for a minute but you know that is what it is. Part of that's also just me not having patience to wait for the PVA to dry before I glue the nose on. That's a bit of a learning curve, I think. I, I didn't think about the fact that it wouldn't work. <laughs> Even though it's basically too chemical, so duh, but hey ho. The kit itself is also not very expensive. I bought four of these from Europe, including shipping, it was like 65 euros. I mean, these days it's pretty much 65 pounds. But, you know, it's, it's nothing really for four kits. It's really not bad value, it's less than 20 pounds a kit. I think they retail for like 14 to 18 pounds, depending on where you get them. They're really not that bad. It's a really interesting subject and I say it's such a similar aircraft to the Alpha Jet and yet the undercarriage on this aircraft works. I just want to point out, it works. FX and Hella and Ravel have all got the Alpha Jet. I know it's only really like two different models but whatever. And yet I have had difficulties with the undercarriage on every single one of them. And yet this just works. 
I had no issues with it. It was strong, it was stable. I've never had that before. Strong and stable, strong, strong, strong. <laughs> and it just, it worked perfectly. I was honestly really impressed. KP models, like, just pop off. <laughs> so yeah, like if you get the opportunity, definitely buy this. But that's about it for me today. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, make sure to subscribe to the channel to see future videos. I tend to post them on Mondays. Drop me a comment down below of what display team I should build next and make sure to like the video. If you do want to support the channel, you can do so over on Ko-fi. You can subscribe on a monthly basis to help me out, or you can just drop me a one-off donation to help towards model kits and parts. But I don't want you to feel pressured to do so. Only do it if you really can. Thank you so much for being here. You guys are absolutely amazing. Oh, and also, I'm going to be at Telford as well, so make sure you say hi if you see me. <laughs> Bye! Thanks for watching the video, I really appreciate it. Hit the subscribe button and notification bell to be notified of every new video on Mondays. You'll also be able to see me stream live on YouTube. Thanks again, I really appreciate it. Have fun modelling!